Alrighty guys, we're back for Rabbit Aggro, and this is a Bloomboro Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. We got a whole bunch of new bunnies to go over, like a Burrow Guard Mentor. This is a two mana, rocking those Selesnia colors up there. Rabbit Soldier, Trample. Power toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. So very similar to Regal Bunnycorn, two mana, but this power and toughness are each equal, equal to the number of non-land permanents you control. Okay, but Bunnycorn in and of itself doesn't have trample like the Mentor does. That is definitely noteworthy. Other powerful new rabbits packed in like Valley Quest Caller here. This is a two mana, two, three. Whenever one or more other rabbits, bats, birds, and or mice you control enter, you scry one, and then other rabbits, bats, birds, and mice you control get plus one, plus one. Beautiful stuff. And we also have this uh, Phoenix Ace Archer. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce that. But anyways, it's a two mana, two, two, legendary creature rocking those Selesnia colors. It is Vigilance and Reach as well. And whenever this attacks... A plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control that's a token or a rabbit okay <laughs> so the opponent definitely wants to remove this before it has a chance to swing now then if creatures you control have total power 10 or greater draw a card so that's interesting actually i wonder how often we're actually going to get that card draw with this i might not be too hard with the mentor and the bunny corn in here so we also have an old rabbit with pollen shield hair and also has that pretty good adventure side that should work pretty well overall. Might as well finish going over the rest of the two meta cards too. Rocket a couple get lost as well as a couple a case of the gateway express as our choice spot removal. Over here in the one drop spots we have all four seasoned warren guards. So this is a one mana one two but when it attacks while you control a token it gets plus two plus zero oh, until end of turn which hopefully we have a token in here like all the time and if we do then you're just swinging in with a nice three two one drop which sounds awesome just fitting that rabbit theme of course too is going to be pretty good we also have paw patch recruit and this is a one mana two one that's enough for me but check this out it also has offspring for two so you may pay an additional two as you cast the spell if you do when this creature enters you create a one one copy of it that's pretty neat so it could be a three drop two or if you want to consider it that it also has trample and then also whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control other than that creature interesting stuff man i like it oh we also have a trash the town here as a way to potentially restock our hands since we're going wide i think it's going to be pretty darn good also another way to potentially give like trample to that regal bunny corn or something okay three mana cards are pretty important we got Four, hop to it. Three mana, sorcery speed. Create three, one, one, white rabbit creature tokens. Beautiful. We also have a couple harvest strike hosts. This is a three mana, three, three. When host or another rabbit you control enters, target creature you control gets plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. Then draw a card. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, so hopefully a pretty good way to actually restock our hand. Get into the top end we have a couple warren war leaders this is a four beta four four it also has offspring for two and then whenever you attack you get to choose one of these so you can create a one one white rabbit creature token that's tapped and attacking or attacking creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn seems pretty good man we also have a one of here on the top end with season of the burrow Five mana might be pretty steep for what aggro is trying to do, but I don't know. Every now and then you're going to get there. So at sorcery speed, you can choose up to five uh, little paw symbols worth of modes. You may choose the same mode more than once. So the top mode here for one paw, create a one, one white rabbit creature token. Okay. For two paws, exile target non-land permanent. Its controller draws a card. And then for three paws, return target permanent card mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it pretty neat card man so you could always just go five paws into the top ability get five one one white rabbit creature tokens that sounds pretty cool actually but also just having that removal on the second uh, on the two paw mode there seems pretty good too over in the mana base guys a lot of dual lands a lot going on actually we have all the pain lands all four brush lands we got 
our early lands with the Razor Verge Thicket, all four of them. We do have a Restless Prairie packed in here. I did think about more of these though, honestly, but I wanted room for a three tree city as well. So when it enters, choose a creature type, taps for a colorless, one of the uh, main re reasons that we only have one of them in here, but also it's legendary too. So the bottom ability, you can pay two, tap this, choose a color, add an amount of mana of that color equal to the number of creatures you control of the chosen type. But of course, rabbits for days. Hopefully we're going super wide with rabbits and I think this can successfully ramp us in this particular deck. Do you have three Cavern of Souls too? Of course, calling rabbits when we see it leaning a little bit towards the planes because that's what the deck is leaning towards. And then also some honorable mentions over here, thought about Caretaker's Talent, as well as this Patchwork Banner too. Something to think about, I guess. Okay, guys. I do my dandiest to go ahead and save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video, so look forward to that. In the meantime, let's go ahead, take this into some ranked, and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. Heck yeah, we do. In the meantime, though, what am I expecting from the build? A little bit, man, honestly. I think it's going to be pretty good, but we'll see. We'll see. We go first. This is a great hand, right? I can't complain about this. I guess if we don't see our third, it could be pretty bad. But if we don't see our third and see more ones and twos, that's also fine. Yeah, and going first here is really good, too. I'm going to go ahead and start with Cavern of Souls and call that rabbit right away. Get that recruit down. See what we see. It's going to be a novice inspector from the opponent. Oh boy. We've been seeing a lot of Boros, man. That's a pretty good trade for the opponent, honestly. Um, so we probably don't accept that trade. We'll keep Mentor as a 2-2, and we'll just pass for now. Yeah, Mentor's Trample seems really good to me. We'll see what ends up happening, though. They got that Get Lost. We do get a counter on the Recruit, which is excellent, man. Really good. We find our own Get Lost. I'm going to start with... Uh, I think we have a good chance of seeing mana off of a map, and if we don't, just... Putting more counters onto the recruit is fine as well, so we do find that mana. All right, let's go ahead and swing with the recruit. Get that three through and get that other mentor down. And then we'll have hop to it next turn as well. It's going to be really good, man. Oh, I didn't even notice they played a swamp. Okay, this is not Boros. I wonder I wonder if we're going to get a chance to play that season of the burrow. Since we're far away from this, that should probably be the discard, right? That should probably be the discard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What else do we discard here? I think the get lost because the case is going to do a lot for us probably still. Yeah, they're draining our hand pretty good, man. More mana off the top. I guess we don't mind seeing it for now. We could start with the map on the recruit and see what happens. Because we're probably going to go for the hop to it. But let's see. Another recruit. I'm going to keep that on top. Especially with the offspring. Uh, this would be a pretty decent trade if they double block the recruit here too. And obviously hop to it affects the combat. So we want to do that before combat. A double block would be pretty good for us, man. Like, one recruit for that. They do decide to take two less here. Down to ten. Anyone's game easily. Uh, we can't even rely on having this case in hand, as they could easily find a way to get rid of that. It is gonna be Nurturing Pixie. Bounce the Hopeless Nightmare. Case is out of the hand. We are now top-decking. So luckily we have the um we have the offspring on this. That's so good, dude. The offspring's insane here. 
I guess we full swing. They're tapped out. We have trample going through. Wait a minute. We have lethal no matter what? Yeah, we have 10. Dude, holy cow. That is pretty good. I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. I got really concerned when they started draining our hand with that hopeless nightmare. What? We lost like three cards to that dude, so... Um, yeah, keeping that recruit on top was huge because of that offspring. You can't ask for a better match, honestly. That was good stuff. Holy cow. Let's keep the ball rolling. <laughs> Guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think of Red Rat? I, I just call it Rat because it rhymes with cat, but honestly, it could be Red Mouse too because we have so many awesome red mice in this Bloomborough set. All right. <laughs> Dude, the good hand, right? Holy cow. Swamp from the opponent. A ruthless negotiation. Target opponent exiles a card from their hand. If this spell was cast from the graveyard, draw a card. Hmm. I'm just going to like keep everything and exile the Restless Prairie. Keep my fast lands. I hope that's fine. All right, recruit. Come on down, buddy. I don't know if it's going to be a turn two bunny corn yet. Bandit's talent. This card a non-land card. Uh oh, that's actually really brutal because we like we'd much rather discard one of the brush lands. Um, like I'm sorry, bunny corn, but like right now, based on this hand. I think you might be the weakest link, and that's a really, really tough decision. See, the opponents deciding that they want to drain our hands is actually brutal. All right. Quest caller. Buff the recruit. Swing with recruit. Recruit? <laughs> that was really hard for me to say for some reason. <laughs> um, right, so third comes down. Liliana's probably in this deck, right? If it is Liliana, we sacrifice the Recruit. What's this now? For real? If they lost life this turn, they reveal their hand. Oh. Oh. Otherwise, they just discard a card. Cool. Scary, but cool. Okay, we could go just the offs. Spring Recruit, right? So we're going a little wide here. But also just getting Case down could be pretty good too. Take care of the Thought Stalker. Unfortunately, I think Case is going to get discarded. And I think we should probably go Offspring for the turn. This is a really good trade for them though. Maybe we just play everything and not worry about the Offspring, right? Yeah, we empty our hand. That makes the most sense to me. I think I think I want more creatures, right? So I'm gonna send the get lost. Okay, we're not gonna be solving the case this turn, but it's not a bad turn by any means, especially now we don't have anything to discard to the opponent. They kept our hand nice and drained at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. If that player has uh, one or fewer cards in hand, they lose two life. Okay, well, luckily we go ahead and we buff the recruits here. I'm going to buff wide for sure. I'm just going to give it to one another. If they try to remove a recruit, then we're going to buff the quest caller. And the counter should hit before the cutdown, which would fizzle out the cutdown, right? So I don't think they want to do this. They go for the go for the throat. I, I don't think that's something they wanted to do. Right? Yeah, they dropped the oops. That's completely understandable, opponent. And uh, don't worry about it. You're still in this, buddy. Bring him down to four. We play the land. Other word. Oh. Well, I considered them still in this. Guys, check it out. For the first time in a very long time, we finally accidentally uh, ranked up to 
diamond. Dude, I'm... I'm a little taken aback right now. <laughs> the best way to rank up is by accident. In other words, by just playing, right? Cool stuff. Nice. Holy cow. I'll take it. I'll take it. One of the worst things for me is like actually sitting down and trying to rank up. It's just like, um, I, I don't like putting that much pressure on victories, right? I just want to sit down and have a good time and not worry too much about losing. And so, yeah, cool. We're in diamond guys. All right, let's keep going. Dude, the hands have been good, right? I, I don't think I can complain about these hands at all. This Paw Patch Recruit seems like it's going to be such a good card. All right, Case. Definitely go right into the Bunny Corn. I guess we, for good practice, should have swung first, but the opponent was tapped out there anyways. Up the Beanstalk. We should be concerned, I would say. Although Path of Exile is out of the game. Path, path of Exile? Path of Peril? <laughs> yeah, Path of Peril rotated, right? So don't have to worry about that. Up to it affects combat, so we do it. Swing for seven. Case is ready to come down next turn. Take care of their blocker. Cut down. All right, I'll buff one of my 1-1s, one I guess. Oh, Mentor. I'm actually just going to go for the Offspring on the Recruit. Because it's an extra 2 damage from the uh, Bunny Corn. And wow, the opponent's at 1. Cornucopia. That could help them gain a little bit, but we're so wide here, it's not even funny. Yeah, they just go for the Up the Beanstalk. They're tapped out. We go for that full swing. GG opponent. Dang, dude. Rabbits, huh? Rabbits doing the thing. This feels good. <laughs> oh, man. That recruit seems kind of disgusting, man. We're seeing it like every game, and it's like really doing the thing, and like the offspring effect really doing the thing too. Let's do this, man. Mid video pack. We got a Bloomboro pack. Let's crack that. All right. Uh, Wick, the world, world mind. Uh, I like Magic the Gathering, dude. Always makes me realize how little I actually know how to pronounce properly. <laughs> Especially like the legendary creature names and stuff, too. I'm just like, what even is this? I've never seen or heard of this ever. Yeah, let's keep the ball rolling, huh? Guys, I feel like I should also bring this up as I'm trying to bring it up more often. Wait, I didn't bring this up at the beginning, right? I don't know, man. I'm all over the place. Today's today's recording day has been all over the place, too. So, uh, Because the server crashed for a little bit, so... I'm just all over the place. Let's, let's mulligan. Definitely worth a mulligan. And we'll try this. Nice. Anyways, I was going to say game excuse me stop stop interrupting me i'm trying to trying to figure out my own thoughts here anyways yeah no i i've been trying to say this more but if you guys like the video make sure you like it it definitely helps out a ton and then also if you like the channel consider subscribing we're getting very very close to 4000 which is awesome the team frontliner and seeing a lot of you. Yeah, I'm just going to play the case. Pop the frontliner. I'm, I'm just going to play this for the sake of playing. And we also get a swing here too. I guess we could have seen if they would have blocked. I highly doubt that. We could have done it main phase too. Or not done it at all, right? But I'm going to go for the host. Pop two, it would mean Warren Guard is hitting a little harder. 
But host also buffs it by one when it enters, so. Swing for two. If they double block, it kills both of them at least, so. Whenever you're up against Boris, you have to constantly consider the fact that it's resolute reinforcements when they pass the turn. And so you got to always think like, well, the double block's probably good. And trading into reinforcements is usually really bad. But if this was a 2-1 instead, we probably would have held it back. Or they just call, they pass it, guys. Just like dump our hand on the board, I guess. Let's see what we draw. We go hop to it, and we'll buff the host, and the warren guard, and the host again. I don't know where they end up double blocking here. Okay. I guess we'll buff the... <laughs> this is funny, actually. I guess we'll buff the warren guard. Right, and then that gets another two. So it's five damage a piece. They do go for the double block on the host, actually. So we do get five through over there. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not terrible. The opponent's down to 11, and we have a great board state here. Unfortunately, not able to flip the case as much as I would have hoped today. Not flip it, solve it is what I'm trying to say there. Vangelis is great for the opponent. That's really, really good. Okay, lots of blockers, unfortunately. And they're pinging through with that war leader's call. Wow, Paul and Shield here. Our, our one of is a pretty good draw. Uh, target creature you control gains vigilance and gets plus X plus X where, uh, until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So you can just put that onto one of our rabbits. Uh, and then that's going to be the one that they chump block for sure. And then we play the Pollen Shield here to buff all these as well. We go for that full swing because the Warren Guards get buffed too. Uh, forcing some blocks here, dude. And the chump on the 7-7 is like, for sure. There's the chump. There's the trade. There's not a trade. We get five through. And the case is solved. They get a bat. Uh, was that okay for us? They got their own bunny corn. Down to 14. They got great blockers on the ground, guys. We're in trouble, man. They pass it back, not even worried. Yeah, they have terrific blockers. Um, our bunny corn not doing as much as theirs. We need to see more than mana off the top, that's for sure. With the opponent at four, their Battlefield Forge is actually an absolute nightmare for them. So they're going to be relying on their planes. They go for the draw on the clue. That's pretty good. Frontliner number two. Down to 12. If they buff these... Oh! Mana off the top. That's a shame, guys. I think we only have 23 in here. So it's not going to be unheard of to see your sixth mana. But in the top 13, I'd call that a little bit of a flood. So if they would have brought the frontliner back from the grave, the bunny corns would have been 8-8s, eight and a swing on that would have been, we would have been forced to block a little bit. But they're at 4-2, so they want to, they want to play it a little bit safe. With 5, we don't have successful swings. They probably just chump here. Ah, uh, we're in danger. I think, I think we're potentially going to die this turn. I'm just going to keep it all back instead of like forcing any blocks and stuff. Although they didn't know that we drew a brush land. So technically maybe we could have tricked something. Probably not though. Yeah. Full swing would just be chump the bunny corn. Big bunny corns block the other things. Maybe swinging with this host wasn't the greatest idea. It could have helped us keep our hand nice and stocked. Okay, so here comes the frontliner. From back from the dead. Oh, Knight Errant of Eos for the turn. Guys, 
this is our chance. If we see something off the top that buffs this board state, we'll get that four through since they only have four creatures to block. Oh, never mind. Yeah, no, Knight Errant lets them see more off the top, so they get more blockers down either way. They go for the one drops here, which makes a lot of sense. Down to three. Is there going to be a way through? We're down to eight. They have great swings here. They just, they want to full swing with the bunny corns. Keep everything else back, right? No, with one of the bunny corns. Yes. More mana off the top. No. All right, we'll play that. We'll pass it and we'll let them swing on in. So with one bunny corn swing, I guess they would have risked us having spot removal and then a full swing would end it. So I guess it was actually pretty smart for the opponent to hold back until the very last moment here. They can double buff the bat in the air with the frontliners as well here. So this is very likely enough damage. They're going for the frontliner, man. I don't know what we could see off the top to do that final three damage. But not going for the full swing, I feel, is a little bit risky. Since they don't know what's packed into our deck list, technically. And Green Evangelist. Are, are they going to swing with one of these bunny corns now, is the question. They're 13 13 bunny corns. They are going to swing with one. Okay. So we will chump with the. One of the tokens. Totally fine. I don't know what we could see. I definitely consider this a flood in the top 14 cards. Oh, oh no, more mana. <laughs> uh, yeah, the top, top 15 cards, we saw eight lands. Darn. But let's be real. Even if we didn't flood out, this would have been a huge uphill battle, right? So uh, yeah, let's just go for that swing see where the opponent blocks they have terrific blocks here and i might have been a little bit greedy with our swings that harvest right host would have been much better on this board state right did i drop them the ggs yet i forget oh well what's the harm in double ggs right let them get that full swing on it is nice and wide. They also got the Mirax generation for another War Leader's Call ping as well. Oh my goodness. Even if we were in a locked down board state, if we were locked down for just one more turn, this War Leader's Call could have easily ended us too, you know? Minus 54. Huh. They barely got us. <laughs> okay. Okay. How far are we? We are 28 minutes in. We definitely have time for another one, guys. Let's do this. Let's do this. Bloomboro has been freaking awesome so far. Uh, really enjoying the cards. Pretty cool build around concepts too to consider. All right, upon and what y'all bring into the table, buddy? Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah, I think the hands have been good. With the opponent plays. <sighs> Golgari. What are you? Deals combat damage to a player. You mill two cards. Oh. That's probably not good for us. Alright, let's just um, go for the forest and the pot patch recruit for the turn. Or did we want to save that? Probably not. I think it's fine to get down. Go for the swing. Go ahead and get that mill opponent. Let's see what you got in this deck list. I guess I I guess I really I can't see what you got in the deck list because I can't click on your graveyard. Oh uh, stalactite stalker here too. Fable passage, nice. Okay, harvest right uh harvest right host. Yeah, there we go. Alright, call bunny rabbit here. Oh, you know what, guys? We may have a couple a uh, couple issues. Well, first of all, let's play out the turn. 
get that swing. Uh, yeah, technically we don't have a white source for the hop to it, which could be really bad. Okay, opponent's down to 14. Mana off the top would of course be huge, but we do have the Pollen Shield here play too if we want. I'm just going to go ahead and take the three, see what else they mill here. Okay, I see land, and it was something else, but we can't look at it because of this strange graveyard bug. So what was it the lost? That's a 6-7, bro. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Uh, Valley Quest Caller is pretty good. But other than that, no great swings for the turn. I mean, we still get this down, though, because once we start playing these other bunnies and start getting that scry, that's going to be pretty darn good. Uh, no attacks. We are in danger, dude. Non-vermin. Mill themselves, probably. Be a deep cavern bat over there. Another stalactite stalker, too. Another gnawing vermin. One has a ton of creatures. Yeah, they're not worried. Dude, do we just, like, take the 13, see what happens? Yeah, we might as well. I think we're in big, big trouble, uh, especially if we don't see mana off the top here. We do not find that mana. So we might as well just play Pollen Shield here. See if we can survive the turn. Send the Paw Patch Recruit and look for the mana. I think 23 should be enough for this list, guys, but... Oh, well, especially after we just ended up flooding out a game, too, so... It's kind of like back and forth stuff, I suppose. Okay, we'll chump, and we got to double block the Stalactite Stalker, which I guess would look like this, maybe, and then like that. Maybe. I mean, we're at three, so... All of this with two mana from the opponent, too, guys. So not only are we rocking two mana, but the opponent also only has two mana. They go ahead and activate that bottom ability on the Fester Leech that I completely overlooked, guys. We do find our third, but it is pain land. And at this point, getting the host down isn't, isn't going to be enough for survival. So, uh... We go hop to it, and we have a chance to survive with some blocks here to go down to one. Uh, but also, they could have easily found some removal. And then that would have been it. Down to one. It's a swarm. Okay. Oh, double and down. Dude, that is actually terrifying. Holy cow. Hey. Good game opponent. That's cool stuff. This swarm is a card to look out for. Their, their deck list is a deck list to look out for. That actually looked really cool, man. Husk Burster Swarm. Eight mana. Six, six. Menace. Death Touch. Uh, it costs one less to cast for each creature card you own in exile and in your grave. Yeah, that was one mana for them. So actually, early on here, this card was actually huge for the opponent as I was letting it go through, not really worried too much about them milling two cards. As it turns out, we should have been much more worried about this and potentially considered some early blocks there. I'm trying to think what blocks I didn't take or what trades I didn't take with this leech. Well, either way, guys, we're about 34 minutes in. Let's go ahead. Go over the deck list one more time. Felt pretty good, honestly. Um, pretty tough games there at the end, but also have an end of video pack. Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Boo, we want Bloomboro. No, this is fine too. Oh, that's doubly fine. We like to see the rare wild cards, that's for sure. Rabbit aggro. Boy, oh, buddy. I could not wait to play some bunnies. Okay, a few things. Hop to it. Three mana. Totally worth the triple bunnies because there's so much in this build. 
that actually boosts the bunnies pretty well. Pollen Shield Hair, of course, being one of those cards. Valley Quest Caller, same concept. And a Case of the Gateway Express too. This didn't do as much as I would have hoped today, but I think often, or more often than not, it's going to do a lot. And we did remove a couple creatures with it too, right? We didn't get to see our Ace Archer that I don't know how to pronounce the name of, but would this still be good in here? Yeah, probably. I think um, two mana, two, two Vigilance Reach is still good enough. And then since it works so well with the other bunnies and everything, if it has a huge target on its back and the opponent takes time to remove this, then that does mean that that removal isn't being used on something like a quest caller or something, right? So Pop Hatch Recruit seems really good, man. Like it has so much packed onto it, but the offspring... I wasn't expecting that offspring to actually do so much. When you consider this just like a three mana card too, now you got a couple bunnies hitting the board. But then the ability actually doing a lot too. Because, you know, the opponents are playing so much spot removal anyways, and we're going wide in here, so you you should always have another creature to target. I like it. I like Pawn Patch Recruit a lot, dude. Yeah, seems really good. Uh, seasoned Warren Guard actually felt pretty decent too in here, didn't it? Regal Bunnycorn, not doing as much as I would hope. Honestly, in this build, the Mentor is probably a little better. It still fits the bunny theme though. Still non-land permanent, so it still works with like... Our case happens to be a non-land permanent, for example, stuff like that. Didn't get to see too much of our top end either with the War Leader or the Season of the Burrow. But we did get to see the Host draw us one card is actually pretty cool i actually like this because it has something it does something when it enters it buffs your other creatures helps you get a little bit of extra damage through and it does a lot when you're dropping a lot from your hand like a hop to it drawing you a card and buffing wide and stuff actually really like this host maybe we want to consider more of these but the mana base 23 mana 23 mana should be enough it should be I think I like the one three tree city, but that's that's tough. That's a tough call. Because we have like these Selesnia colors here. It could easily hold us up. Easily. Okay. Other than that, I think not getting too greedy with this mana base and actually just having a lot of dual lands, I think was pretty essential for what we were casting. A 23 should be fine. I think I like the three Cavern of Souls too, making sure that we're not getting held up uh, when casting Case and the Get Lost. And on that too, on that note, Hop to it also can't be cast from Cavern of Souls. So 27 total creatures. All 27 of them are, in fact, rabbits. Some other stuff that Cavern of Souls can't cast in here is actually going to be Season of the Burrow and Trash the Town as well. Also the adventure side on Fallen Shield here uh, called Hair Rising. So I think the three Cavern of Souls makes sense. Honestly, when we grab all these and put them over here, it might even make sense to go down to two of these instead. But again, I think it's going to be pretty good to not be too greedy with the mana base and just have as many dual lands as possible. And that kind of includes Cavern of Souls helping us mana fix for things like the Burrow Guard and whatnot. Okay, guys. Hey, let me know what you thought of the deck list. Uh, down in the comments below. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say about the list because I thought I was going to have more to say, honestly. But no, I mean, the matches kind of spoke for itself and then we got a little bit unlucky with the flood and then a little bit unlucky with not seeing as much mana as we should have. But yeah, I think 23 is going to be a sweet spot for this deck in particular. Definitely let me know. What would you add or take out? What does your rabbit deck list look like? <laughs> Guys, I'm all over the place with like what I'm saying for the like... For the YouTube side of things, so I kind of forget if I brought up the Patreon at the beginning. <laughs> Either way, that's down in the description if you're interested. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I think I actually said that in the middle of the video this time. And uh, yeah, hey, thank you for being here, huh? Uh, let me know also what have you been playing for Bloomboro? Have you been having a good time with it as well? Because I believe that this video will go up on like day three of the new set, new standard for that matter, rotation and all that. How's it been for you guys? Okay, enough rambling, huh? I will see you in the next video.